Oklahoma. Seen by some as just another flyover state, but this 46th state of the Union is full of history, culture, and natural beauty. Our focus here today is the Wichita Mountains National Refuge, which is located in the extreme southwest portion of the state. It is here that the Great Southern Plains give rise to an ancient mountain range called the Wichita Mountains. Composed mainly of pink granite, this hardy rock has sculpted this environment into an uplifting landscape that is revered by the Comanche, Kiowas, and many other nations and tribes. The present-day Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge encompasses over 59,000 acres of this sacred land. 37,000 acres of this is set aside as a protected habitat, but over 22,000 acres is for public exploration. To truly understand the significance and importance of this area, we must go back in time and take a look on the how and why this refuge came about. By the early 1890s, the bison population was near extinction. 90 years before, it was estimated that 30 to 50 million bison roamed the Great Plains. By 1902, it was said fewer than 100 wild bisons remained. Their extermination was multifaceted, but the desire for bison skins and to take away the Great Plains tribe's food source were high on the list. In 1901, the 25th President of the United States, William McKinley, set aside the initial acreage of what was then called Wichita Forest Preserve. Just mere months later, McKinley was assassinated, thus ushering in the presidency of Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt was an avid conservationist and hunter, and in 1905, he renamed the Forest Preserve the Wichita Forest and Game Preserve, which was the nation's first big game refuge. An unlikely hero for the reintroduction of bison to the plains was the New York Zoological Society, which today is the Bronx Zoo. It was from this captive herd that 15 bisons were transported to the refuge in 1907. From this humble beginning, the park, with the help of land and game management, now boasts over 600 bison. Today, over 1.7 million people visit the refuge every year. The primary attraction is viewing the largest native grazing land mammal in North America. They are truly a sight to behold in this wide open country and it is an experience that many will never forget. But the bison are not the only activity to partake in. The refuge has ample opportunity to lace up your boots and view the fantastic natural beauty of the area. So this is my first trail that I'm hiking here in the Wichita Mountains. It took me about 10 hours to get here. It wasn't that bad a drive. I think it's about 80 degrees. So when I started out today from Illinois, it was in this 40s, so I gained 40 degrees by coming down here. But uh, so far, so good. This is the environment that I wanted to come to. And the reason is it is so foreign to, you know, back home. But it is beautiful. The Narrows Trailhead is just under 10 miles west of the visitor center near the Boulder Cabin. It's getting late and I've got to be out of here by uh, dusk. All the trails close at 10, so I'll have to save this section for another day. So I'm exactly where I was last night before I had to turn around because uh, the sun was going down. So I'm gonna continue down this gorge here, see what's going on. I'm pretty excited about this. So this would be my first full day here in the Wichita Mountains. Got a little taste last night. This trail has become more of a rock boulder jumping mission than actually a trail. So if you don't like rocks, uneven surfaces, yeah, don't recommend this, that's for sure. I think I can go around this way. Uh, I thought I was gonna have to go up and over, but I don't think that's the case. We've got some jets in the sky here. Uh, Fort Sill is close by, so if you hear that in the background of some of my video, that's what's going on. Yeah, we're going to head over here before the light uh, starts fading on this, because that's really beautiful, the way the light's reflecting off this. I wish that uh, it's a little bit more calmer, so this would reflect that mountain there, but uh, you know, you got to work with what you got. We've got the sun starting to rise behind this rock here. 
we've got this pool laid out here. Uh, there's no swimming here, so that's kind of a, a drag. Not for sure if it gets, if the hills get a little bit smaller back here, because this one looks like one of the biggest ones. So we may have come through the biggest part of the Narrows. So this place is a playground for photography. Just the shapes, contrast, the forms here. Uh, they are spectacular. <laughs> this is cool. So the creek is getting a little bit wider here and it's getting smaller, the hills here. So I think I'm gonna go back up and uh, go up that little side canyon. <laughs> a little break and that rock is not actually an arch just a crack look at that that is pretty cool that I think these geese have claimed the entrance to this canyon <laughs> that is cool yeah I think they want this pool. I think they're waiting on me to leave. So that ends the first hike here at the Wichita Mountains. If it keeps on going like this, I mean, this is beyond all expectations. My only complaint, and I don't even know if I'd call it complaint, is signage or lack thereof. So yeah, if you come out here expecting to uh, be told which direction to go, it's just not set up like that. So just come out here expecting to get off on those little side trails and have to find your way back. You get turned around every once in a while, but you know, pretty much stay in the canyon or head for the canyon, so. Our next stop is about 20 miles away from the Narrows. From here, we'll be exploring the Karen's Garden Wilderness. It is from the southern end of this area that we'll be hiking the Post Oak Waterfall Trail and then heading north into the Boulder Fields. Yeah, this is totally different than the Narrows. Uh, this looks like a rock garden here. Looks more deserty. Wow, isn't it beautiful though? The Karen's Garden derives its name from Greek mythology. Karen was the ferryman of Hades taking souls across the river Styx from the land of the living to the land of the dead. This tells me I'm on the right path. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna go to the Post Oak Falls. I don't think it's going to be very far up this canyon because it looks like it uh, dead ends up here. Oh wow. So this is the first waterfall that I've seen on the trip and uh, it may be the only one that I'll see. Oh my goodness. This plunge pool is super deep. That is drilled out. Oh man, that's probably five foot deep maybe and we've got the waterfall here it's just trickling just interesting how it had drilled out this canyon found this crack in this granite and just carved it out oklahoma wow Karen's Garden is one of only three wilderness areas in the state of Oklahoma. It consists of 5,700 acres, which is over 25% of the public use area in the refuge. At this point, I feel like I am in Utah. Now, I know the rock's not the same, but it just has that feeling. Like the Narrows, the trails at the garden are not well marked. As you weave in and out of confusing trails, continue to follow the stream up to a valley that splits in two. Our destination of the boulder fields veers up the steeper valley to the right. This mountain has just collapsed into this creek. Oh my gosh. This place is insane. I mean, I did not know this was on this trail. I knew it was called the boulder field. And I mean, these rocks are gigantic. And if this one fell, it just crushed me. And there's 
all different kind of uh, little caves and caverns in there. I'm wondering how many places I've missed. I mean, I could spend a day just back here exploring. Wow. It's a really cool place. Okay, I made it out of the boulder field. I'm getting low on water, so I've got about uh, 40 ounces of water left. So I'm gonna use it to get back. Our final destination is just a short drive to the northern side of the garden. All right, it is day two or three, however you wanna look at it. But uh, this morning I'm headed up Elk Mountain. I think it's about a mile, but I could be wrong. Just looked on all trails, said 2.7. Tried to get out here early, because it's gonna get hot. Uh, 90 degrees, which bear in mind that it's only April. So that's pretty warm for April back home. And uh, I expect this to be a steep climb, but I'm um, hoping to get it over first thing in the morning before it does get too hot. So here we go. Look at this gnarly tree here. This here reminds me of the Rockies. Okay, so I thought I was getting close to the top and I re-entered the forest up here. This trail is not marked either. It's kind of wishy-washy in places where you kind of have to find your route. I've got lost once already, but was able to find my way back. Yeah, no signage. Okay, I think I'm getting close. I don't know if I'm going to top out at this one or on this one here. Elk Mountain rises to a height of over 2,200 feet. Its vertical relief from the trailhead is around the same height as a Gateway Arch in St. Louis. These granite mountains give one an impressive viewpoint of the valley below. Bison appear as tiny specks on the vast landscape. Other mountains in the wilderness, such as Lincoln, Bat Cave, and Phantom, can be seen in the distance. As you roam around the top, impressive outcrops of rocks appear. Different levels of the mountain can be explored, with some leading into some interesting locations. Although most tunnels and caves are closed off, some only go back a few feet, like this one, and abruptly end. As you continue west on the top of Elk Mountain, huge boulders can be seen strewn all over. To the ones who are curious, these rocks demand attention. So I've been to Elephant Rocks in uh, Missouri, but this must be Mammoth Rocks. These are a whole lot bigger. Ooh, that was a trek now. I'm gonna call this one Buffalo Rock, because this part right here Looks like the head of a buffalo. There are an insane amount of holes and crevices underneath these rocks. And these are not as easy to get into as the one over in the boulder field. These are a little bit more dangerous and compact. So I don't think I'll be exploring these too far unless I, unless I find a really good one that's easy to get in. You could spend a lifetime just wandering these uh, mountains up here. Unfortunately, I don't have a lifetime to spend here, so. If I did though, I would map this place out because it is a, an awesome place. As my time comes to an end here in the Wichita Mountains, I am truly thankful that places such as this are being protected not only for our enjoyment, but to ensure that wildlife and plants flourish in this unique environment. Although my time in the refuge has been limited, I hope to come back soon to continue my exploration of what some people refer to as boring Oklahoma.